That's so brilliant. This video is sponsored by Case Filters. Hi, my friends. Very nice to see you at a garage appointment. Uh, 40 minutes from here, I will get some nicer features, nice extras from my van. Hopefully, when they offer, will not be too high, to be honest. And I thought it's maybe a good idea to come over here to we'll check out a fantastic waterfall. The only thing, what I think is it's maybe a little bit too early. So I will look here. I had a bad soap already. All uh, it's early spring. I think it would be better. Yeah. Uh, in one or two weeks or so when everything starts really to get fantastically green and so but anyway i'm really excited about this little adventure and i would say let's see what's possible here and the weather is fantastic for waterfall photography we have overcast weather and a tiny bit of rain i like it with rain because it's a guarantee that there are not all the many people out there so I can connect really, really fantastic with, uh, with the spot. All right, it's also always important for me to explore the area a little bit, uh, a bigger area of it. So when we look down there, there's also a waterfall down there. It's not that particular waterfall I'm going to photograph today. But what I can see is, and we look out there, I mean, we can't, we can't climb down here. It's a little bit too steep, to be honest. I will not do that. But uh, we could maybe walk through the water or beside the brook or something like that with weight trousers or so. And we could also come down there. And what I'm looking uh, at the moment is, uh, yeah, if there are features, if this waterfall is nice, and uh, I see that there comes a little S-curve over, which has a tiny bit here in this direction, and also the big waterfall down there. So I think it's possible. We also have a little cascade in front. I'm not sure if it's possible to see it with the, with the ultra wide angle lens to be honest but it's also a possibility this waterfall i just think um yeah i'm not sure about the structure of the rock down there but it also doesn't look all the bad so that's also an option to be honest but i would say here we look for the waterfall oh yeah it looks really Nice. So fantastic. This line here, this uh, kind of frame here at the right hand side. And this uh, that wood back there. I, I would say have a try here for composition. Oh, that's really such a fantastic place. It's so amazing. I think I'm here already for an hour or more. I don't know. I don't know how long. <laughs> I didn't uh, have a look at my watch or so, but it doesn't really matter. I, I tried for different uh, compositions. Um, I got attracted by this nice waterfall back there with uh, the dead wood up there and all these boulders here in front with the mosses up there and so. And first I thought it's maybe a good idea to, to use this uh, red uh, line here of leaves to lead into the frame, but then we get a kind of drop off here. And yeah, I'm not 100% sure about if it's seamless enough, uh, the composition, the flow, to be honest. So I made a test shot, I will try for that. If it's good, you will see it right now. Yeah, I will anyway show it to you right now. It doesn't really matter. And uh, I think the stronger image uh, is actually this one here. So I, I went a little bit closer here. I tried to come a little bit higher. I tried to get closer to my foreground elements. And my foreground is now this, uh, this boulder down here. And very important, uh, this boulder right here with this uh, yeah, a plant up there, which is growing there, this uh, subtle green. And uh, yeah, we have early spring, but the first greens come already out. It looks so fantastic. It, it also catches the light in a really fantastic way. I bring this out a little bit with the polarizer. That's really fantastic. Um, I have this um, brown boulder, this orange boulder down there, and we have this nice uh, yeah, curve up here with the water. I try these different uh, shutter speeds. This is quite important here to get a little bit of structure in the water. I'm at F13, circular polarizer on, ISO 100, and I would say, let's make it click. to sit here 
amazing. I just have this kind of gap here in the in the rock where I I hold my whole weight. So when I when I would sleep here, I would fall down here into the water. And also the tripod when you look here. Yeah, it's a little sturdy to be honest, but it's the only possibility to get this composition to work. And I often get asked uh, if we should use the Santa column or, yeah, you, you know, I mean, the photographers making jokes about, uh, yeah, the Santa column that you get an ICM photo when you're using it or something like that. Of course, it gets a tiny bit more unstable, but what should you do? Uh, you come into situations where it's really all about uh, a few millimeters to the right, a few millimeters to the left, and so on, fine tuning. It, it's impossible without middle column. Um, you, you see, I could come out maybe, yeah, a few centimeters more there, but it, it's quite sturdy down there. I don't want to move it to that direction, so it's truly uh, difficult to bring it in setup. And yeah, I, I, I feel it in my back already, to be honest. That's uh, really hard. But anyway, I think I get rewarded here with a really fantastic composition. So um, we have uh, this nice plant here now in the foreground. We have this rock here, this little stone here. We have these mosses here. We get a little bit illuminated that catch the night uh, light really fantastic. And with the circular polarizer, I bring this out or a little bit. I got the question why we should use a circular polarizer in woodland and also uh, with the mossy rocks and so on. And uh, that, this is the reason because to get out a little bit more saturation there. So I'm at the same waterfall. Same that would back there, just a little other perspective, and I really like this composition. I'm at F14 now. I have to focus that because I'm quite close here. Um, yeah, but that's not really a problem. And I would say, let's make the click. something that attracts you and you don't decide for the first composition you find so what I did is uh, it's the same part of all as, as before I think here uh, not sure how many 10 15 cascades or so I'm, I'm still working at the same because I got attracted to it and I, I went over here before I was a little bit more in that direction and uh, I, I thought about making a composition where I take a little bit more of this dead wood in I made a shot, I think I will show it to you quite, uh, right now. It's not, I mean it's not bad or so, but it's not, it's not a vodka shot or so. Because, yeah, uh, it doesn't really, I mean, it's not all too special to be honest. But try to simplify the scene, yeah, by zooming a little bit in, to emphasize on this uh, nose here, uh, in the center of this image, uh, which splits the waterfall in this big one at the left hand side, and this tiny one at the right hand side. I take just a tiny bit of this rock here into my frame. And what I absolutely love here is how the light gets caught here by this uh, rock, by this nose here in the center. It's so fantastic. I get such a fantastic plasticity here. And finally, it was this what attracted me much more than the dad was up there and so. And I zoomed in more and I, I focused more on, on this, this one nose. And I think this is a stronger photograph. I'm here at round about, I don't know exactly to be honest. Um, oh yeah, a little bit more than 100 millimeters. I'm at uh, F16, I have to focus stack. I often get questions, why don't you use F8 or so when you focus stack? It's better to use a little bit, uh, uh, to, to close the aperture a little bit more and have smoother transitions. Uh, I like this much more to be honest. So I would say, let's make the click. Oh, 
wall is absolutely amazing. Just look here. So much water and all that dead wood here. It's so fantastic with all the mosses there as well. And the first thing was I, I thought about uh, framing a composition from this perspective with these rocks here framing this waterfall. But on the left hand side, the dead wood, yeah, it doesn't make all the much sense to me, to be honest. It's a little bit too much of chaos. And uh, so what I what I do is I, I thought about the most important characters here in this composition or of this place actually, and this is uh, these logs here and this tiny nose over there. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's. Uh, stands a little bit in that direction and I, I crop in quite tight just to pick out this feature because what I really like here is this feature of how the water uh, gets splashed up and when, when, it, when it hits up how it gets splashed in every direction this looks so fantastic and uh, what I found out is it looks a little bit better when I go up a bit higher with a higher perspective so I climbed up to this rock here and let's go up here and a quite tricky thing to be honest uh, you know usually I like to um, crust on my light meter in the camera because yeah that's uh, I, I don't have to uh, concentrate all the much on the technical things in the camera but in this case uh, I really need uh, to use uh, manual mode because when you look down there to the waterfall and the logs and around you see that there's always uh, splashing water bright water over the log and this makes the entire frame much brighter so especially when you are with a long lens quite close and you're cropping quite tight it always shot between a fifth and a thirteenth of a second or something like that and i think a thirteenth of a second uh, works really best here i have to say because the water is quite fast here and i want to freeze actually the water that splashes uh, from this nose up here and uh, what i also do in this composition is we have this uh, brown rock here at the left hand side and we have uh, the water at the right hand side and I try to balance this at uh, diagonal so at the left hand top uh, corner and at the uh, bottom right corner so that it balances a little bit and uh, yeah I would say let's make the click It's a bigger waterfall here, it looks really amazing, it's so fantastic. With this log going up there, with this dead wood up there, it's close a little bit from the light back there. And the water going down here and going down there, it's, it's really, really amazing. The only problem is, uh, yeah, 60 millimeters is not enough, uh, I need to go shorter. I have also my 12 millimeters lens with me. I think I will change, I will try it with that. Because, yeah, I'm, I think one millimeter or something like that. Uh, yeah, and then that yeah, could really get a really powerful shot. Now, the only problem is that uh, 12 millimeters is quite short, a quite short focal length, and I can't put uh, some kind of polarizer on. I need one here to get the glare down. Uh, and uh, I'm really, really happy that Kayser gave me this adapter here. It's an adapter for a bigger circular polarizer. So I can also use it with my 12 to 24 millimeters f2.8 lens uh, from Sony. And it's just it's easy to put up. It looks like that here. Um, and I, I put it here and on the lens and I can here put on uh, a bigger polarizer. This is what I will do right now. This is the polarizer now, it's quite big. I will link it down in the description if anyone is interested for his 12 to 24 millimeters lens. I trust this too, that there is no water on. Oh yeah, it's really good. Really good to understand. You know the magnetic system, I just have to put it in, that's it. 
There's a little bit of spray on to put it away. And the quite funny thing is I said around one millimeter uh, more would be enough or so, but now I'm really at 12 millimeters. I tweaked around with the, with the composition and actually it's so fantastic to get the, the left hand part of the stream in here with all the, the waterfall here, the left hand side, also with the log here at the left uh, top corner and also uh, this part here. And yeah, <laughs> to be honest, uh, 11 millimeters would, uh, yeah, no, we, don't want, we don't want to overdo it, I would say. Let's make it quick. fantastic afternoon of waterfall photography my friends i hope you enjoyed this video of yours please give me a thumb up i picked out this video for you to watch next and yeah don't forget to tune in next week thank you so much for watching see you next time bye